Is the Honda Fit the most practical car you can buy? We talk about that, an update on the Chevy Tahoe and Suburban, and the Porsche Macan, next on Talking Cars. Hi there, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Gabe Schauer. And I'm John Linkove. You know, if we lived in a perfectly rational world, a world where everyone ate their broccoli, Everyone worked out five times a week. Everyone invested the max in their 401k. We would all be driving the car parked behind us, a Honda Fit. Is that so? That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. OK. Well, that's it for talking cars, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Well, uh, yeah, no, the new Fit is quite a clever little car. Oh, it's always been a clever little car. I mean, it's a space wonder. I mean, they, uh, the, the amount of space you have in this, this thing is just unbelievable. I mean, the, the tricks you can do with the seats is, uh, is amazing. Yeah, the, mag the magic seat, you either, the bottom cushion folds up flat against it, so you could kind of put big, tall things, and you can fit a bike in, but like, I think- Like a pickup truck. You know, you can, you can raise them up. Oh, that's that right. Nice that's big that's flat exactly load. like yep. a pickup truck. Or you can fold that's it. That's the only time anyone has said a Honda Fit is just like a pickup truck. Just like truck. a pickup truck. <laughs> it's or the rolling coal for, version <laughs> of the <laughs> exactly. Honda or, or you can fold the rear seat for a really low floor because part of it goes under the uh, front seat. There's a trap oh. with that, though. I, I had the Fit for a weekend, you know, reveling in its space. I went and I got some, I got some organic produce, as I want to do in the exciting weekends I have. I put them on the floor behind the back seat, and then I folded down the, the rear seat, forgetting that it goes so low into the, the footwell and it mushed. Oh, well, mm -hmm. you could have had a whole organic plant standing up in there. I could have, yeah. thanks to the magic seat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John, can, please help us. Yeah, okay, I'll bail <laughs> you guys out. Um, yeah, fun, nimble, uh, enjoyable to drive, um, much like the last one, but now you have a little more oomph. Um, still a little noisy. Yeah, 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 definitely yeah. with the CVT too, a little well, I would, at the top. Uh, I'd actually uh, modify that little noisy. It is a loud car. Oh, it's noisy. well, no, I mean, the previous car that was definite. Definite. It was definite, yeah. so but this one's less definite, but it's still to, loud. It's still kind of loud. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it loud. You know. it's, it, feels, it feels rather tinny. I mean, I... Uh, $19,000. It's nineteen thousand dollars, and which no, I'm is saying that's as a good thing. That's, yes, uh, it's at the expensive end of subcompacts. Yeah, but look at everything that's in right. this. I mean, it's, we, we could have bought a seventeen thousand dollar one with the CVT. We've this nineteen grand. You got a moonroof. You have a big touchscreen radio. You've got a whole Actually, bunch of I, uh, lane watch, blind spot monitoring stuff. Yeah, I can't stand that thing. No, I mean mm. it's. Uh, I I actually would buy the LX if I were buying a Fit and I'm buying it as a strictly urban runabout, I'd go with an LX because I'd give up the, uh, the, the radio. I can't stand the radio. The radio is, is a disaster. It only says and, nice things about you, Gabe. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that doesn't change anything. Uh, <laughs> Who doesn't? But, uh, <laughs> and that uh, blind spot monitor, that's way over I'll, the top. I, I, uh, I don't need to see a picture of this. I, you know what? I mean, it just makes me not use the, uh, the right directional. Because the screen goes away. You and all of New Jersey. Edit that okay. way. Um, so it's funny because my wife drove our Odyssey for a couple of days um, out to the Cape, and mm -hmm. she actually loved that. My she wife loved it too. Loved it too. She's like, look at you this. Know, this is amazing. It is. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, I said, well, what if it had it for the left side, which is the bigger blind spot? And she's like, oh, that would be cool too. But she loved it. So, you know, it, it is something that people do like. You know, yeah. I, it, it's a silly thing to have it for the right side, in my opinion, in our opinion. You know, where the left one has the big blind spot right here by the pillar. That's right. When you're merging or passing, exactly. you're going left. Yeah, you you're know? definitely you're going left more in than the, right. In the speedy traffic. Exactly. But that said, um, the, the couple things with Fit, you did say it's 19. You said it's a you know high end of the subcompact. So you get a bit from me, a little bit of plastic in, in some of the touch spots. I'd rather have a softer elbow rest on the door than a hard piece of plastic versus this nice, shiny, faux leather airbag cover. But you know why that exists? That exists because there's a... In the world of in the interwebs, yes, people compare fit and finish based on cabin pictures this of, big, of the yep. inside, exactly. And they're going to see that padded, you know, low sheen bit with a bit of stitching cross. They're going to say, "Ooh, luxury." Luxury. Mm -hmm. But I'm with Gabe. I would buy the LX. Yeah. Seventeen grand. You're actually not you giving go. up much. It has cruise control. It has an outside temperature indicator. It has mm -hmm. all the USB stuff. It has everything. 
know, it's it's a really good deal. Yeah. The thing is, though, the fit was delayed a bit. Well, I was tasked with buying it, and it was supposed to be delivered in mid-April, and then it was it's delayed. It's not mid-April anymore. And it was delayed, and it was delayed, and it was delayed and delayed, and I finally said to the dealer, forget it. You know, we're going to go find one somewhere else. And the day I said forget it, it was assigned to somebody else who found it at another dealership. My car still hadn't shown up, even though it was the first one that they were supposed to get, and someone else in our company walked in and bought that one off the lot, basically. Yeah, and that was uh, July. Late, late July. Is that because they knew we were Consumer Reports well, and, and they uh, cooked up a special car for us? I don't think us? so. I don't think it, you know, part of me thought like, oh, maybe they do, because I wrote a blog about how late it was and how delayed it was. And there's all kinds of theories about it, whether there was a crash protection thing or whether there was a manufacturing defect or structural Yeah, or the rumor is that stickers. There's, there's a ton, there were a ton of manufacturing issues. Because yeah. you got to remember, it's a whole new design. In a new plant. A Made whole new factory, built yep. in Mexico, so you've got to train the workers yep. the first ones that supposed supposedly the first ones that came off the line were not good and you know, they, they had to sit around and get fixes the, the biggest thing is it's good if the cars launch correctly it's better if the manufacturer actually communicates information to the customer because mm. you know what there's a lot of people out there no, there are a lot of people waiting money, for fits putting 500 Absolutely. putting a thousand dollars down and no, then getting I, told I, nothing. I had, I had somebody on Twitter uh, who you know, we, we've been tweeting back and forth for my goodness eight months yeah. You know, all the ever since it came out in Detroit, oh, I'm getting a fit, I'm getting a fit, I'm so excited, I'm getting a fit. And I mean, this poor guy has been sitting there waiting for three or four months it's for them to do it. It's kind of un Honda like, but it, it's you know, very it is Honda-like. very un Honda. It I falls mean, with under Honda, everything is like this exact date, this exact hour. I mean, you can basically adjust your right. watch. But it's not, I mean, you know, one thing is it's not uncommon all of a sudden. Sonata had recalls right when it first launched, software updates. GTI had a problem with a stop sale right as it was launched. This has had problems with it launched. Like, there's a lot of these get it right. GM's recalling their recalls. <laughs> so maybe they wanted to avoid recalls, just held up the cars and fix them before they reach consumers. I think that's the right thing to and do, but be. you've got to tell people, right. hey, yeah. look, yeah, we're having some issues. Yeah. Um, that was really frustrating. And a dealership that was really nice lost a sale. Yes, they're going to sell the model. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you know what? The guy lost a, a potential commission, and maybe it's going to be taken you know, out. It's, it's, Honda didn't treat their dealers right, and they didn't treat their customers right with this fit in, in the launch. Yeah, I think that's fair. Let's look at some questions. Uh, this one's from Twitter. How are the Chevy Tahoe Suburban and Subaru WRX doing in CR's test? We've gotten a lot of questions about the Subaru WRX. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a few weeks. We're just finishing up testing on that, and we'll do a show on that in a couple weeks. Let's talk about the Tahoe and Suburban. Yeah, the Tahoe, uh, well, the Suburban with the LTZ trim line is, uh, is the one to go for. And I there's mean, one important it, reason. There's one important reason. It has the magnet ride suspension. Magnetic ride control. Which, yep. yeah, magnetic ride control, which uh, takes care of body control. It's less uh, snappy, less um, motion sickness in, in the car. It also helps handling, I mean, by a long shot. Yeah. It, it behaved better in our track. It uh, is uh, more responsive on the road. So, uh, I mean, unfortunately, it's an expensive package. Well, yeah, the LTZ is expensive, but the only way you can get it in a, um, in a Yukon or a Yukon XL is to get the Denali. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's baller money. Yeah, you know, that, it is. That's, yeah. that's a lot of money. But you can yeah, hustle, actually, like you were saying, you can hustle those trucks around with the magnetic ride, a lot of confidence, Yeah. very comfortable um, with load, with you know, six yeah. people in it. You know, the interesting with, thing is we, Obviously, several podcasts episodes ago, thousand episodes ago, yeah. we we went out and we, you know, we talked about our first impressions of, and they were mostly based on the Tahoe, and the Tahoe was much less compelling. The Tahoe is is uh, really unimpressive, actually, because I mean, with, with the base suspension, it base wallows, suspension, it doesn't handle it's, as well. Uh, it's, the ride is stiff, it's snappy, it wallows, uh, it it feels underpowered without the uh, max towing package. Right, because the max towing package changes right. the rear axle ratio, so it gives a little bit yep. more oomph off the line. You and, and you'd think in terms of functionality, it has an edge over some uh, some smaller car-based competitors, but it doesn't because the uh, third seat is tiny, and yep. why? And at sixty thousand dollars, I mean, I can buy so many nice things for sixty thousand dollars. What would you buy instead? No, but you could stay in Chevrolet and buy a Traverse for a lot less. Ironically, you'd get the same fuel economy. You get that's, the same. That's one. You get the same that's, fuel economy. That's that's a knock on the Traverse <laughs> or a compliment for the Tahoe. But you know, you're you're going to spend a lot less money and you're going to get a third row. It's probably a bit better. I mean, Tahoe that's right. has you, that you weird are... positioning of like a hump in the third row as well. And 
you know, has, it still is, has a high lift over to get things into that oh, now fold, flat, flat folding third row seat. I, I had the Suburban at home the other day. I'm like, hey, I will take this to go mountain biking. And the floor is so high yeah. up. And, and in order to make all the seats fold flat, it ramps up. Yep. So, you know, you'd think you could stand up bikes inside. You can't. It's huge. I put. There's still a lot of room. Ten you know, eight foot or whatever tables in the back of, a, of the Suburban. It was awesome, you know, fit everything. The only other vehicle I was able to do that was a Mercedes GL. Or the Honda Fit. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and they were also organic and naturally sourced yeah, well, as well. That, that's good. Um, yeah. You know, so the Suburban's really, if you need that size, it's great. The Tahoe, I would... I'd get a Durango. I did get a Durango. You, you get could a get a Durango, you could get a, a Toyota Highlander hybrid uh, for $50,000. You can get an X5 for yeah. sixty. dollars to 63,000. Yeah, because our Tahoe was 60. Well, what did our GL loaded. diesel cost? Oh, that was 72. Uh, 73. Okay, yeah. but still, you know, I mean, you're playing in that... The Suburban's that, knocking You're on playing that in that, that area. Other things start coming in like that. You know, I mean, if you're financing it. But, I mean, you know, so... But, so uh, one more thing here. Sure. I mean, a lot of people uh, are under the impression that the GMC is somehow more upmarket than the Chevy mm -hmm. brand. And that's not true because the, the GMC doesn't get the Magna ride unless you get the Denali. That's right. And uh, that, that's, uh, I think people need to know that. I think they give you a few comfort and creature comforts at slightly lower trim levels, but the, the Magna rides, the, the, I'm sorry, yeah. the magnetic ride control is the big deal here. And neither one of our cars looks stripped, you know, I no. mean, comparable dollar no. to dollar with, the, with what you have to pay for the, the GMC version. These are luxurious super comfortable vehicles mm -hmm. in the sense of creature comforts. Yeah, I guess to sum up, I mean, the Tahoe, it doesn't have a very good third row seat. It's way high to climb up into the thing. The cargo space behind even the second seat or the third row seat, it's good, but it's nothing, it's nothing to write home about. Uh, you know, unless you're towing the 8,200 pounds, a Durango tow 7,200. Mm -hmm. It's a little less wide in the back, but for most people that won't matter. Yeah. But the Suburban, the Suburban, you can put seven, eight, nine people in it. You still have plenty of cargo space. It's a more compelling proposition. Oh, it's huge. With oh, the yeah. two rows folded down, it's amazing inside. Even I with mean, the third the, row folded. The great. nine people is almost non-existent. Well, that's, that's only that's in the ALS and the base car, which is probably bought by fleets. fleets or yeah. utilities, whatever. But no, the LTZ Suburban is a really nice vehicle. It looks they good, just, too. I mean, the seats are comfortable. Really the column. You're shifter, not a big fan of the column uh, shifter? I, We've yeah. talked about it. Yeah. We yeah. talked about it in a previous episode. A knob would be... Hopefully soon. Yeah, well, there are, there are other more elegant ways of doing it other than this like ancient thing from a pickup truck I mean, from 1970s. These yeah. things are going to be going to eight-speed automatics. The 6.2 goes to an eight-speed in 15. Yep. I would bet the, the, the 5.3 will go to an eight-speed in 16. So we'll probably be revisiting them then. That's um, the reason why we didn't do an Escalade. That's right. We're going to hold out for the eight-speed, which will be 2015. Yeah. If the Honda Fit is the practical car that all logical people should own, I'm not really sure what a Porsche Macan is. I do know it's 62. I do know that our test <laughs> car. Keep smile. That's I, I, well, that's important. I do know our test car is sixty-two thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, well, what do I get for sixty-two thousand dollars? Well, you get a Porsche that uh, drives, uh, has the DNA of a Porsche. I mean, the way it steers, the suspension works, and the way it sounds. And uh, it's a lot more practical than the 911, the Boxster, and the Cayman. So uh, <laughs> well, there, you, there you go. <laughs> so is a Kia Soul. So is. So I, uh, I actually love driving that McCann. John? So I went home the first night of it thinking I would buy an X3 and save the money. Um, Which would be 20000 Yeah. fifteen to $20,000. It's roomier in the rear seat. Um, the BMW. The BMW, sorry. The BMW is roomier in the rear seat than the Porsche. Um, it's, it's just, it has a nice presence. It's sporty. You don't have a low slung compromise, you know, and there's a lot of room. Again, a lot of room. You know, you could fit three people in the back. You could put car seats in, in an adult, two in the, adults in the, in the, the BMW. The BMW, BMW. More yeah. Then I drove this on back roads a bit. And I came down a, like a, a downhill that transitioned to a very sharp uphill. And the way it handled that with no roll and no lean and no hop. And it just took that turn. Like, that's where that car is oh, the, the, in its home. The body control is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm totally with you here. I mean, I have an X3, so I know what an X3 is. And, but you know what, an X3 is becoming in some areas such a commodity, such a, like, everybody has one. 
that. That's why they could all get Honda <laughs> Fits. Yeah, they'd, right. they'd, be, they'd stand put out, out more. Put a BMW badge on it. So, there you go. I mean, the McCann is, I mean, this, I mean, it's an order of magnitude sportier than the X3. I mean, more expensive, more luxurious It's got a lot inside. more power. It's or at least unless, you know, you get, especially compared to the four-cylinder or your non-turbo right. inline six. Yeah, I mean, when you compare it to the turbo in line six, you're, you're pretty it's, comparable. It's more of a bauble. It is not practical in the sense of, look, you're not putting people in the back seat no. for a long term, you know, especially if you're tall, a tall driver, a tall What passenger. if I don't like them? Well, then that's fine, but you can put them in the hatch. Yeah. yeah, with a bag and a Actually, shovel. I'll put them in the frunk of my box. There you go. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's the frunk. It, it looks nice, it sounds nice, it, it's, it, I'll tell you what, that whole collection of buttons is intimidating at first, but a lot of stuff is really at hand versus hidden here and in a menu and in a screen and this and, you know, so there's some ways, you know, it's, it, it's, it's growing on me and it, it's actually accessible. Um, it, but it's not a rational choice. But Porsche is never going to be a rational choice. Of course, no, that's no, not no, a no, rational no, 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 choice. No, no, no. You know, it even is. BRZ is not a rational choice when you get into those types of cars. Honda Fit, rational choice. Well, Honda Fit's the organic rational choice of Consumer Reports trademark. Uh, <laughs> I mean, clearly, for that price, you can get a lot more practical yeah. vehicles. You can get a luxurious three-row seat uh, SUV. But that would be uh, missing the point. Sure. I mean, I mean it, it is, it's it... a tremendous guilty pleasure. <laughs> oh, I mean, sure. I, I enjoyed the <laughs> yeah, hell out of yeah. driving it. it. It drives really well. It's, it's very enjoyable. I would have a much easier time folding it on the seats of that X3 and putting my bike in than that. That's like, like way too nice with that like colored interior. It, it, and I will say, a little disappointed some of the fit and finish. Oh You're paying yeah, 63 there's some grand, things that don't fit right. And I haven't, I haven't tweeted it out. I took the picture and then got in day of work. But speaker grill's not fitting well. The, around the, the little console around the chrono is, 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 is uneven. You know what? Yes, a car is millions of parts and it's an engineering marvel. But if you're selling at that price, it better damn well fit Also, well. Six, remember $62,000. It was another delayed introduction. Yep. You know, you, you'd you really hope that they yeah. they, they get it right. But they, they charge you for every little thing you want. You want every little thing fitting properly. It's fun, but maybe not the most practical choice. Yep, but that's not what it's about. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.